Hi, welcome to Film My Run. My name's Stephen. Uh, so a few weeks ago, I travelled up to London uh, to visit Vassos Alexander and I did an interview with Vassos. Now, the thing to remember about this interview is that he was about to run the Arc of Attrition 100 mile race. And my interview was kind of focused on him running that race. Now, it turns out that in the last few days before the race, he injured his back and he couldn't run. Uh, but nevertheless, the interview is very interesting um, and we don't just talk about the art, we talk about a lot of different things to do with his background, his history with running, some of the other races he's run, uh, lots of different things about how he manages his nutrition, those kind of things. So it's quite interesting to listen to him. Uh, so here is my interview with Vassos Alexander. Hope you enjoy it. A little bit of... Now, why have you just started recording? Who asked you to record? <laughs> that bloody telly, when we walk past it, it just turns on, and I don't know how to stop that but happening. This has got voice activation, but I'm sure I didn't say, oh, and maybe I did say record. Yeah. Anyway, well, it's recording now, we'll just let it run. Okay. Um, so we'll just, just, yeah, I mean, let's just get you down to tell me what you're going to ask this. Though. Good, good. Right. Yeah. You're, not, you're not nervous then? No. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done this before? Just the odd, the odd thing down the Sorry. Yeah, so it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Good. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh dear. All right, Vassos, um, what's your name and where do you come from? Uh, my name is Vassos Alexander. I come from that there London. That there London. And, and a bit that there Greece as well. Oh yes. Of course. What, I, do you know what? I should always ask you about that. Where, where does your name come from? What's that? What's it's that Greek. It's a Greek name. Um, my dad's Greek. My mum uh, is Greek. And uh, so yeah, I was, I was born and pretty much brought up in this country but I spent every day of every summer and actually some other holidays in in Greece so I feel you know I feel Greek actually funnily enough whenever I go to Greece I do feel like I'm going home kind of even though I've you know born here lived here all my life feel very British as well have you ever thought about living in Greece no no I mean no although whenever I go it's um it's a sort of curious mix of um, oh, you know, Greeks and oh, Greeks, because <laughs> everything's you know, everything, yeah, that's how I feel also, about Britain as yeah, well. <laughs> everything's like slightly kind of brilliantly chaotic in Greece, um, and also, but uh, you know, but the fact that you know, old people's homes don't exist in Greece because you just you just take care of the family, they're so sort of about the family, they're so warm and welcoming and loving, um. Is, of, it, is that true? Yeah. Old people's homes, you don't get residential homes no, in Greece because no, the family look you after you. You look after our own. What's yeah. happened to our country, I say? Yeah, I think, I think that a bit. But, you know, I'm not, you know, it's not all perfect in Greece by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, it's probably more perfect here. And I, I absolutely love it here. I'm so, I'm so happy and, and lucky to live here. I sort of get the best of both worlds. People say, do you feel British or Greek? And I don't. I feel British and Greek. When England played Greece at football, that famous game, obviously I didn't want Greece to do anything when, when David Beckham scored the free kick, but there was a friendly a few years back. I think England won it 5-0, but whenever England were on the attack, I'd think, you know, come on England, score. Yeah. And whenever Greece were on the attack, i think, well, come on Greece, score. So it's, like, it's sort of like you get two nationalities for the price of one, rather mm -hmm. than one or the other. That's nice, I didn't know that about you. Cool. Um, what do you do for a living, Vassals? I work on uh, the radio mostly, a bit of telly, a bit of writing, but um, people tend to know me from the Chris Evans Breakfast Show, currently on Virgin Radio. How, how many different stations has Chris been on with you? Two. So BBC Two, we were, two and Virgin? We, yeah, we were on Radio 2 for um, eight years, something like that, eight, nine years, and then we moved three years ago. It's our fourth year at Virgin Radio, and it's gone by like, like that. Yeah. Where did you start broadcasting? Where, how did you get into it in the first place? It's broadcasting. Um, normally, running comes at the end of that sentence, but no, broadcasting no, yeah, is yeah, more yeah, interesting, yeah. almost. Um, I've always loved... I was a sports reporter, still am a sports reporter. Um, I, uh, I, don't, I, sort of, I sort of fell into it. I did a little bit of student radio reporting from... Um, you know, the local Exeter City, the local football ground. Um, but it was never really, it was never really with a view to a job. And then I was, as I was leaving university with a Russian degree, um, I was thinking, well, you know, what am I going to do with this? Just Russian stop degree? you on that. 
You said Russian degree. Russian degree. Right. Why yeah. on earth did you do a Russian degree? Because I love reading. Oh, I did. And I still do. I still love, you know, reading. Because I, I speak quite a few languages because I'm brought up bilingual and, and French as well and German. And I could read French. I did French A-level. I could read, you know, Camus in the original. And I could read Goethe in the original. And then, and I just, Dostoevsky, I wanted to read. I wanted to read, not to sound too sort of, you know, um, can I say wanky on this? Um, uh, yeah, we'll let you off. Presto plenia in Akazania rather than War and Peace. And so that's why I did Russian. Um, and it was a fantastic opportunity. You get to spend a year in the country when you do a degree of a language. So I spent a year living and working in Russia, which was fantastic. But I didn't really want to do And no one asked me to become a spy, which I was sort of hoping that that would happen with a Russian Isn't degree. Isn't that just I'd normal? I'd be a terrible spy. But I was sort of hoping that, you know, MI5 or MI6 or whatever one it would be would you come forward. Yeah. You would they, expect that, wouldn't you? They <laughs> never did. They never did. And so then I just thought, you know, I really loved those, you know, early days listening to the radio and, and sport on the radio and, and, and the television. And it just sort of formed me without me kind of did. And so I thought, well, what if I got a job? in sport and what you do is you do sort of lots of rubbish jobs and then you sort of work your way and it becomes very quickly who you know not what you know and you were I worked my way via Eurosport and, and a company called Sports Media which was doing like little radio bulletins for tiny little stations around the country um, to the BBC and then Five Live and then Radio 2 and then bits and bobs for BT Sport and Sky as well uh, over the years and now very happily at Virgin Radio. Nice one. So you've you've got multilingual. You've got a degree in Russian. You have got a very successful uh, and, and a career that you're happy doing in in broadcasting. Where's the hole in your life that running fits? Yeah, in? yeah. Well, yeah. People people often ask, you know, <laughs> why, why do you feel you need to run <laughs> these stupid distances? And maybe I did, maybe if I'm absolutely honest, maybe, you know, back in... The, well, I don't know if I ever did feel like I needed to run. I mean, there's no sort of... I was, I was swimming, I swim now, I swim in the, in, in, uh, in the Serpentine, which is a lake in the centre of London, every day on the way to work. And I get up an extra 45 minutes early just to get there um, and swim in the, in the ice-cold waters, no wetsuit or anything. And I love it. And somebody said to me, Xavier... Um, there's a sort of early morning 5am crowd, okay. say crowd. I, I often see nobody, but he was there this morning. Um, and he said, why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> He's got like a French accent straight out of central casting. Why do we do this to ourselves? Are we punishing ourselves for something? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we must be. But I thought, I don't think I am. And I don't think the ultra running is that either. I just found running quite late in life. And I, you know, I laced up a pair of shoes and I realised that this was ticking like all the boxes for me. It was good for my physical health, obviously, which is why I started, but also my mental health and it gave me space and it gave, it just gave me a kind of a, a, a sort of reason to get out. Which I loved every little, you know, they say, you know, running ticks different things for different people. It ticks all of the things for me, you know. And so I did my first, you know, 5K and I sort of got running and, you know, run walking and then half marathon was my first race, the Great North Run. And then what if... I did a marathon and then what, you know, what if I went a little bit further and, and it wasn't ever a plan to sort of do these silly events. But then I did feel, I did this race back in Greece actually, this, uh, this long, very historic race called Spartan. the Spartathlon um, a few years ago and I did feel that that was a full stop, you know, like they don't get much tougher than that. And certainly I can't, you know, I, I was laid out on that road, I couldn't walk for a week after. Do you want to explain to people who don't know, I mean, first explain what Spartathlon is, but then it must have meant something a bit more to you as well, personally. So everyone, I guess, watching this will have heard of Marathon, and they may have heard of a guy called Philippides who ran from a Marathon to Athens to announce a victory over the Persians, which was a big surprise, actually, because this was a big, bloodthirsty, massive Persian army arrived in Marathon, and they would have panicked in Athens, absolutely panicked. They were sort of laying waste to all before them. Um, but before the Athenians went and fought in Marathon, they thought, well, we're buggered here. We've got to ask Sparta, a rival city-state, for help. So they sent their best guy, Philippides, over the mountains to the Peloponnese, to, to Sparta, a town now called Sparti in Greece. Um, and according to legend, he arrived before night fell on the second day. So, you know, day and night. And then, um, actually, an RAF pilot thought in the 80s, I wonder if that's even possible. 
did a run from Athens to Sparta. So he tried, failed actually, but that sparked the imagination of, and the Spartathlon was born. And so you try and do it. They put sort of wicked cut-off times. You know, I think the first marathon out of Athens you have to do in three and a half hours, three three forty-five, something like that. And it's quite a rolling, you know, which is if you've got you know five marathons to go after that, and you've done that. And then I bet the first 50 miles is eight and a half hours, something. It, it, it's, it's quite punchy early on, and then it eases off. But you've got a 4,000-foot mountain to climb in the dark, and it's just, you know, there are, it's the cut-offs that can really kind of mess with your And the heat, I would have thought. And the heat, and the freezing cold at the top of the mountain, which is always at night, and um, the fact that there's only 300 of you, and you have to sort of, you know, qualify to get there, but only half of you are going to finish, so you don't really see anyone else. And it's... Um, it's really hard, and I'd never run more than 100 miles before. And, you know, to go another 55 miles after that, it's quite, be quite punchy. I don't remember the last... I was good for 120 miles, and then I just <laughs> fell apart. And, and I sort of managed to crawl my way. You, you don't... You know, but the Greeks, it means so much to them that you're honouring their culture by taking part, that they're out in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. Schools have the day off school they love it don't you know they? Yeah. to come to the nearest yeah. point in the route and give you any advice any encouragement any anything you want they just they really love it and ever all greeks have heard of this race which, you know which here only sort of us ultra nutters have anyway so i did i finished that race somehow and just tell us what you, why do you kiss the foot at the end so there's a statue as you come into sparta um actually as you come into sparta there's a timing mat on the floor and there's only been about three timing mats in the last um, sort of 150 miles. So you think, well, this must be it. This is the final timing mat. And then the guy said to me, there's, uh, there's only two and a half kilometres to go. And I thought, because oh, I bring my, I thought, I, well, there's the, there's the mat, there's the mat, there's the mat. I can't see a statue, but I must be hallucinating. It's fine. Um, and then the whole of the kids take your hand as you walk through the city. Um, and... Um, and, and you know and, and you're sort of everyone stops what they're doing and it's all like a big old party that day and they applaud you through the city and then you go down this sort of avenue of flags and there's the statue of the warrior king if you've seen the film 300 the warrior king Leonidas slightly different part of history but it doesn't quite matter um, and, and instead of you know going through a finishing line you just you, you touch or more charmingly you kiss his foot to finish and then you're given a okay. you're given a little cup of water from the river the Ebratas which is what Pheidippides would have been given at the time and then they put a laurel wreath on your head nice. and then they take you off into a tent where it's like a Vietnam war film you know people on drips you know all sorts of sort of you know they actually they you know they, they try and they ask you if you wouldn't mind if they take some blood from you at the start and the finish because they want to know oh, what, really? okay. what that does to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never did that because I had to shoot off because I was back on the breakfast show the next morning. Okay, oh um, gosh, that's a quick trip. Yeah, so there's actually, there's a huge party. The mayor has a party, then the mayor of Athens has a party for you. It's a massive old deal, which I never managed to get. Although I, I wasn't able to walk, I wouldn't have been able to go to the parties. No. Um, so that, you know, we do this ultramarine to see where our layers, you know, how, you know, peel back as many as we can. And that was all of them, you know, for me. That was as bare as I can be, you know. Um, Chrissy Wellington, the Ironman yeah, World Champion, she said to me, she's a good friend, and she said to me once that she retired because that fourth World Championship, there was, she had nothing That's else it. to give. That was it, you know. I, I would be chasing it. And I did feel that that was a bit of a full stop. And then COVID hit. And then I didn't really have anything to, to, to train for. And it, but that's fine, you know, I found swimming and stuff. Talking about Spartathlon being um, possibly like the pinnacle of what you thought you could do. Um, you did attempt Dragon's Back. Was that before or after? Before. And how, and how did that? Did that not make you feel the same way then? No, that's a real itch. That's the only race I've ever DNF'd. Um, I came into that. Not that I want to, you know, the, 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 the Welsh mountains well and truly beat me up. Um, I did three days, but I did have a badly sprained ankle when I went into the race. Um, and I'd love to have had a crack at Dragon's Back without the badly sprained ankle. And in fact, in 2019, I was going to go back and do Dragon's Back and I dropped a blimmin' toolkit on my foot and broke. And there's one race in the world you can't go into injured and that's Dragon's Back, yeah. basically. Um, and I did and I tried and I failed. Um, and it was it was a wonderful experience. I mean, the running in the mountains there's just it's just sings to my soul. So are you going to go back there? 
yeah, it's very much on the list. The, the thing is that I have done, you know, I do ask a lot of my family to let me kind of... Dragon's back six days now. We all it's do, six, though, don't six, we? Yeah. Six days. Yeah. So they've added another day. Do you want to stay the night on Conway before seven days? Eight, basically eight days away, which is quite a big ask when I've got young kids. Yeah. When I've done... When I've done and I've done it before, you yeah. know. But there's also such a sort of there's a, there's such a wish list, you know. I've got, you know, there's there's the arc, yeah. which God willing I will do next week. Then there's the some of the big American, you know, how oh, good would Western states be? Oh, I know, you know, I know. Um, and a crack at, at one loop of the Barclay or something. Yeah, I know. I think I think Barclay is. Um, I think Barclay's. Be, I mean, I know some because runners who are. Them, a, a, much better than no, I don't think. I think Bar- I, I sort of know my limits, and yeah. I don't. Think, I think Barclay no, you know, um, because I just, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. But okay, maybe I'll get a loop. Maybe, maybe I'd get a loop round the bar. Yeah, yeah. But and the films that must not be able to do it justice because yeah. because yeah, you, know, you do run the great. It's only the, twenty odd miles. The, How can yeah. it be that long? The, yeah, the the greats of. Running, yeah. don't finish the bar, don't finish like, um, don't even get there or whatever it's called. Mm. Um, so I'd, yeah, but um, Leadville, maybe, yeah, yeah, what do I say, maybe? I mean, definitely, <laughs> bad water, bad water, bad water is a long, hard, hot run, isn't it? Yeah, you'd, you'd be up for that then, mm. yeah. okay. Um, and then you know, there's all the you know, there's all the stuff in Europe as well, Tour de Géant. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just Rosa. yeah. There's lo- there's so many. I mean, now we're so lucky because we're in a sort of boom period of endurance running, and it's only getting more and more popular. So there are just more and more races. But we only to, have. To I don't know how old you are, Vassos, but we only have so many years left, don't we, where we can do this? Forty-seven. So yeah. what's give me 10, 10 yeah. 15 years max? Yeah, yeah. We can get max. a bit in, can't we? Yeah. How old are you? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. So yeah, yeah so ten more years. I reckon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Stay if we stay fit and healthy. Trouble is, injuries take longer to bloody get over now. I see my seventeen-year-old daughter, and she, you know, she comes back hungover as anything. Yeah. You know, drunk as anything. Sorry, eighteen. I should have said. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'll edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's she's fine. You know, she's going to the. So can do some weights and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, I used to Whereas, write essays overnight and hand them in the next day. I mean, we can't quite, do that. Yeah, yeah. Anymore, I, yeah, I let my hair down properly for the first time in a few years on New Year's Eve, and I think I recovered from it yesterday. Yeah. 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 When did you first hear about the arc? When did it cross your radar? I don't remember a time. Like I do remember when I first heard about Spartathlon. Yeah. Um, Debs Martin Consani told me about it as okay. we were running South Downs Way together. Um, Arc just was sort of permeated my consciousness and went and went sort of straight in with a bullet at, at you know top three maybe in top one of races in this country that I really want to do and it's I been remember, a while. I mean, I wonder if James Elson told me about it. Maybe. I remember you talking about it via Martin about four years ago because you nearly tried to do it about four years ago. I think yeah, um, it's been, it's definitely been on the radar yeah. for a while. Yeah, um, and. Yeah, and, and high on the radar for a while. Yeah. And it would take a special race, which this is, to, to sort of reignite my love of... I mean, yesterday I did a 50-mile run, mm. which is my third 50-mile run in training for this. Um, I say 50 miles, it was eight, eight hours. I imagine it was about 50 miles, but as you can see, I don't, I'm not wearing a running watch anymore, which is just a... Oh, why, you, why don't you do that then? It's just... I couldn't be bothered. It's just so much more of a joy if I don't have one on. Are you not... You do that surprises me a little bit because you do strike me as somebody who might like to look at data. No, never have done not really. Bothered. No, no, no. The old if it's not on Strava, it didn't happen. I, I've never been. I've never been on Strava. Um, I used to. I used to, when I was training to do a sub three marathon. Then it was really important what you know what yeah. minutes per mile I was running, and then I just always had a running watch, and then I got a. A, a good old mountain Garmin, you know, with a nav thing on it mm-hmm. for Dragon's Back. And I've just worn it ever since, a Phoenix 5X. Yeah. Lovely, lovely watch. Tells you your heart rate, tells you all of that. But then if, if I'd look at it, my heart rate was a bit high that day. I think, well, what's wrong with me? You know, it's just another thing to get stressed about. Whereas now I have, no, you know, I go out, I have no idea how long I've run for. Um, That's nice. I mean, obviously, I know it's within, say... Um, 
30 minutes to 40 minutes yeah, or yeah. you know an hour to an hour and 20 yeah, or something yeah. like that but but general and it's really just it's great it's back to the simplicity of running um so but for the arc are you will you be wearing a watch will you have the navigation on your watch how will you nav the, the arc yeah, I haven't properly thought about it, but I will put it on my watch. It's a week before. Yeah. That's awesome. No, it's 10 days before. It's 10 days <laughs> ten before. Days. Which loads of time. time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I thought it was a week. No, 10 days is fine. It's loads That's of time. Right. It's loads of time. Um, Good. I am, I am quite slapdash when it comes to... But I quite like that about... You know, you just, it's why I didn't really love doing triathlons is because there's so many kind of... Fiddly bits. Mm. Remember your gun. Remember your wetsuit. Remember this. Remember that. Remember the bike. The helmet. The, uh, you in know. the right place Whereas, so you get disqualified. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running is just go out there and run. I don't have a crew for the same reason. It's just the simplicity of me against the distance. Okay, so that's interesting. So most people who run the arc would definitely have a crew, and yeah, most people who have run the arc would recommend you have a crew. Why? Is it, a, is it a practical thing? You just don't have the people to do it? Or, or are you deliberately going out there saying, I'm going to try this without a crew. I'm going to just take all the kit I need with me and see what happens. I, I just don't. It's not a practical thing. Okay. Um, although it's a big ask, but it's not a practical thing. It's a, um, it doesn't really appeal to me. To do it, you know, almost everybody who does the Spartathlon has a crew, and mm. everyone who's done it and finished it would recommend that you have a crew. Mm. You don't really need one. You don't really need one. It's you know you, I you know I've done this distance before. I know it's going to be really hard. Um, I'm sort of hoping it's not like the Dragon's Back race nav wise that you know it's largely following the southwest coast path, which is largely you know self-explanatory. Keep the sea to your left, right. Um, kind of <laughs> yeah yeah. I know kind yeah, of yeah. so I will definitely load it onto my watch but I hope I won't have to you know be doing this the whole time yeah um, but it's I just it's it's a challenge it's not a you know I, I don't I don't feel it's like about um, oh I just, I really, you know it, a crew is just a, one level of um, not sort of organisation but just one level of faff too many it's, it's just i just i just love the simplicity of okay i'll see if i can do it so so um have you given that you've said you're slapdash have you um decided what you're taking in your pack to last you because the, the the aid stations are yeah few and far between few and far between a few people who are running it have said that they've got crew who will not let me go without a you know chocolate button or something on the way which is lovely and that's great um and that happened actually, you know, some of the British Spartathlon team helped, the crews helped me out when I was, you know, but you, there, 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 are, there are aid stations, there are, it's not that there are none. Um, I, I will just, you know, I will do what I normally do, which is go and buy a selection of bars and gels and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, gels, I know, 20 minutes later will give me a few free miles, which is always like, but then, you know, you pay for it afterwards in your stomach. Mm. I will eat for as long as I can eat and I will keep going. Are you good with, with high GI sugar stuff? Can you manage that all the way through or will you need savoury things? Yeah, I have I have a little selection. Yeah. I'll have, a, I mean, obviously the backpack and I'll have a, you know, selection I'll try and remember to eat every hour and, um, and drink and I sort of, I don't want to say I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. I never get stomach problems because, um, yeah. you know, what's going to happen if I say that? But, I tend, I tend to be okay. No, put it this way: stomach problems have not ended a race for me yet. Um, and I have a, at my, you know, my sort of my biggest weapon is just bloody mindedness. Mm. I just, I don't allow myself to think that I might not finish this, and and then that that sort of simplifies everything again, doesn't it? Mm. I just keep going. Just keep going. If you take, give up off the table. Then all that's left is just keep going. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm really looking forward to it because it's been a while since I really. Having said that, yesterday's training run was just horrific. But I did it. <laughs> I did it with no food. Um, what whole? F how many hours did you say? Eight. Eight hours with no food. Yeah, basically found Okay. Yeah, I had to stop in a Tesco Express to get a banana because I was going to pass out. Yeah. Um, I was literally going to going to faint. Oh, and was that was that kind of deliberate? Yeah. Yeah. Train hard, fight easy. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. Um, 
Okay, look, you you are not a slow runner. Your 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 marathon time is what sub three sub three sub three yeah. two fifty okay. nine. No, it is. It's faster than that. <laughs> That's fifty nine. Is it I, really? I think I have run it a faster one, but I think it was short. So I oh, okay. it was it was a small marathon in like um. So I'm my my fast my let let's go with two fifty nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I think uh, knowing. I mean, you know, I don't stalk you, but I've seen some results, and I think you're you generally we could say you're a, you are a bit quicker than two fifty nine. No, well, two fifty. I'm not, no, I'm only a, if I'm quicker. I'm only a bit quicker. Okay, and that was pre vapor flies. So okay. um, I sort of feel that <laughs> you know, I sort of feel that they have taken such a wedge off people's. I don't. I don't. I'm still not. I'm still not totally convinced by this. Really? I just. I just just go with it. They're there, aren't they? Well, yes, they are there, but are we in danger of just? becoming just slaves to all the gear. One of the things I love about running and swimming is the utter simplicity of it. Mm. It's just you and a pair but of then, shoes. But if those pair of shoes are going to get me you 4% quicker than that... Yeah, but then why don't we just run barefoot? Because the shoes that you're wearing now are... They are, don't, no. They don't make it... Um, well, these are not well, running shoes. No, yeah, know, but but you, you know what I'm saying. Can you imagine trying to do, <laughs> trying to do a, an ultra in Yeezys? Having said that, my first ultra ever, the Race to the Stones... Um, Oh, you GQ reader, you! <laughs> yeah, they they uh, they they got into this is a while ago now, like twenty thirteen, something like that. Oh, and they said, um, "Do you fancy it?" And I went, "Yeah, yeah, I fancy it." And um, I turned up, and you have it's here's the last minute this, right? I thought it was from Swindon, from just outside of Swindon to just outside London. I thought yeah. that's where it went. Right. But it turns out it's from just outside London to... And I'd organised transport from just outside London to pick me up. I've never done it, so I don't... Yeah. I don't but it actually turns out it's the other way around. <laughs> and, really? then, and, then, um, and then on the morning of the race, I went and I got... The, it's the Oxford Tube. It's the first stop on the Oxford Tube right. out of London. So it's about like 10 miles outside London. And I was waiting. I got an Uber to the nearest bus stop for like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. And I was waiting there. There was another runner there. And I went, oh, I've, I've got those trail shoes at which point the realisation hit that I'd left both those trail shoes and my road running shoes by the front door it's too late the bus is coming here's the bus yeah and um, so I had to run my first you know my first ultra my 62 miles in um, just basically like suit shoes like nice. brogues yeah excellent which was interesting yeah um, I bet you finished that yeah, finish it. Yeah. yeah, apparently twelve hours is the thing there, and I, you know, I, no. I ran. That's the thing. That was my first time running it with someone else, mm. having a chat, making a new friend, realizing how sort of, you know, how welcoming um, the ultra community yeah. were. Um, and it was no, it was great. He actually turned up. We we spent the whole race going. Hundred kilometers is plenty far enough to be going on with the hundred mile brigade. Welcome to their yeah. belt buckles. And then the, you, they the, won't be seeing me. Yes, very next day. <laughs> very, we, we spent fifty miles together, or forty, whatever it was, together, just yeah. going no, 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 no. And then the next day, the text oh, comes in. You know, what, what if you know? And then he came. Actually, Kate turned up on the start line of my first hundred, which was South Downs Way. I was on the start line of your first one hundred yeah. with you. In fact, I interviewed you in the first five minutes. I think. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. What round the field? Uh, I think we were just after the field. We just um, yes, yes, we yes. Just, yeah, we, you were talking about sub three marathons then as well because you said you felt. I, I good. did. I mean, yes. Yeah. I felt really good that day. Mm. I wanted to. You I did because I didn't see you again. For I didn't do badly, and I didn't see you again for the whole rest of the race. And you I did sub twenty, to... didn't you? Yeah. 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 I wanted. I. I so I forgot, uh, uh, Exercise and just holding back those first few miles because I was I tapered I was I was really fit that was 2016 I think mm. and I was really I was fit that year and I was fast and I felt like I want you know three hours into the race you go well I'd have, I'd have been 20 at least 25 miles into a you know marathon by now and it's like you're in yeah, whatever yeah. it was 20 miles but it felt good it felt good and I, did you learn a lot then with that with that thought process of, of realising that you really can't go off like a crazy man in the first three hours I wonder though or, I mean I wonder I wonder if I do a 50 if I do an easy 50 what if you do well how about trying a go hard and hang on I know the thing is we don't do enough of these I don't do enough of these to um, to really kind of be able to test it out it, you know you, you, you've only got a few 
marathons in you really relatively and a, and a few kind of 50 hundred milers unless you're professional or you mm. you know you make it your life's work and I kind of my family is my life's work but it would be interesting to go off like a bat out of hell or just like yes. just generally you know seven seven and a half minute miling and just see what happens because you fall apart anyway in a hundred mile race it becomes horrific anyway mm. so why not bank those quick miles why not just make it horrific a bit early on <laughs> but yes but you know You'd have got the first sort of 30, 40 miles done quicker. Yeah. Do, do you then fall apart so dramatically? I and mean, I suppose I did in Sparta. I mean, I think that's what the elites would do. If the elites were going for a win, what they would say is um, go out hard and try and, break, try and break those people behind you early. Yeah. And, and, and it's worth the risk to do that. For, for guys like you and me, perhaps, it's not, necess- it's, it's not really worth the risk all the time. Yeah. Because... Because we're doing it generally for fun and for fitness. Do we want to risk paying? I mean, you know, for some people, it's a lot of money to pay for a, a big race like yeah. that. You don't want to then and blow just, it in 10 yeah. miles, do you? But exactly, exactly. And actually, you know, and it's sort of not the point. Yeah, it's sort of not well, the point yeah. because it's the, 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 the joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is. And that's the, that's the point of these races, certainly if you're not the sharpen. Um, Scott Jurek was telling me when he... Um, when he ran Sparta, mm. he won it twice, I think. Maybe I, he certainly won it, I don't know how many times. Maybe three times. Definitely twice. Yeah, okay. Um, one year, he was on his way and he saw this, this, this bloke, this like head torch behind him in the dark, but only like a mile behind him. Mm. And there's literally, you don't see anyone else. And, um, and so he starts putting the hammer down and he's doing like six and a half, seven minute miles, which... 70, 80 miles into a race is unbelievable, you know, and this, this, this head torch isn't, isn't, isn't managing to shake him, and it was only afterwards he realised it was just another runner out, out running, it wasn't one of his competitors for this part <laughs> of Yeah, yeah, I hate it when you're in a race and somebody speeds past you and you think, bloody hell, and thankfully you realise they're not actually in the same race that yeah, you were in. Yeah. Uh, well, look, talking about um, sub three marathons and, and going hell for leather, um, Completing or competing? What, ARC? You, yeah. Oh, no, completing. Just completing. Complete, completing, 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 completing. Okay. A, B, C, completing. Yeah. D, E, F, G, Z, completing. Okay. Just completing. Absolutely not. And this is just for the, for the sheer experience. Um, I sort of feel like PBs are behind me, probably. Maybe not in 100 miles. But what do you think the, about that? So you've got... This isn't the PB course, anyway. No, certainly not for 100 yeah. miles, but... Yeah. Um, there's the glory of getting the sub thirty buckle. No, I don't, definitely there's, go for that. There's the definitely twenty four buckle. If you, you know, I, I mean, I'd, I'd hasten to guess that you're probably somewhere on between a good day between the two. Yeah, twenty six hours. What do you think? Look, the joy is I don't wear a watch anymore. Okay, so I just I don't know. Do you care? No, not really. I, I suppose, look, if you push me, I'd probably like the sub-30. I probably would. Um, I think sub-24 is just cuckoo land, which is, <laughs> which is nice. Um, and, and I'll sort of see where I am when I'm, when I'm racing, because you just never know. And you can, sometimes you can just not know 60 miles in how, how, what sort of day you're having. Um, you can think it's nice, and then it suddenly turns like that. Um, which is one of the joys of this sport. Um, but, yeah, on, honestly, I haven't really sort of allowed myself to think about it, but now you put me on the spot. Yeah, I guess sub-30 okay. would be nice. Have you managed to get down there at all to recce? Mm, no. No, not even close, to be honest. And have but you ever been... I mean, I've never been anywhere to recce, to be honest, though. Have you, uh, have you been... You, you've been to the Coast Path before? Yes. In Cornwall? So yeah. you know some sections of it? No. Nope. Can't remember anything? No, I've run on the coast path when I, my wife and I went for our um, um, wedding anniversary to yeah. North Cornwall, but I can't honestly remember if that bit is on the bit that we're going to be running. Right. <laughs> but I just, I, I don't get, please tell me, right? I don't get it. So I'm, I'm, really, I'm even running like Southlands Way, which you were talking yeah. about, right? And people said, oh, I've recce you know, all the sections. Yeah, My yeah. brother-in-law, who lives on the Southlands Way, wanted to recce all the sections before he did it last year. 
Um, why? I mean, it's you just you run the. I guess it depends on your motivation, what you want to achieve, doesn't it? If you if you want to get the best possible time you can, if you don't know the coast path, you you will go wrong. Now, whether you care whether you're going to go wrong or not doesn't. You know, you might go a kilometre or two off in the wrong direction, or you might go 400 metres down that path and have to come all the way back. Now, that is going to add five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour to your time. Whether you care about that is in the... Okay, well, the, the coast path and then the South Downs way are two different things. I mean, I happen yeah. to have gone wrong on the, okay, on the South... Okay, I did do two extra miles, actually, on the South Downs way. So there you go. If I'd wrecked it, maybe I wouldn't have done. Yeah, yeah. Um... And I will go wrong. I've gone wrong. Yeah, I went wrong there. I've been wrong there. I've been wrong there. Yeah, I largely do. You do go wrong. If Is it part not. of the fun? No, it's just I'm not. You know, I've like I've never laid out a flat Stanley. I've never. Um, I just. I'm a bit more sort of like see what happens mm -hmm. about stuff um, than most people. I think. And a lot of people can't be like that a lot of people have to organize a lot of people have to be confident that they know where they're going and what they're doing and and to not know perhaps would make people frightened and and if there's going to be if there's a hundred mile race in the uk which scares people it's the arc of attrition mm. well there's a few but yeah, yeah that's yeah, right but yeah. the, the arc's right up there Lakeland. right up there yes. lakeland i was thinking yeah. yeah um and which is why i'm so excited you know, um, and I, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what the Southwest Coast Pass can throw at me because it's going to, you know, it's going to beat me up good and proper. And just maybe, and just hopefully, you know, I've got enough on the day, on the days, <laughs> to, uh, to, to, to make it to the end. I mean, I, th I think I probably do. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I probably fit enough. I've done, I've done the training, which has been a, revelation to be able to you know to have something have a date in a diary and, and realize that you've got to do it carve days out where you like yesterday we were not doing anything else and you just go running for 50 miles eight odd hours and i assume therefore given the way this interview has gone that uh, you didn't actually write down a training plan on your calendar you've just gone out and done some miles and made sure that you've done a yeah. few more than usual but, i mean is it you know if is it is it okay? Maybe not. Is it okay for me to think, look, my legs know that they can do 100 miles. They can do more. They can do 50% more than that. Um, or they have done. So it's, you know, it's... But for any race, you know, you can't train for a, the, the, you know, the arc by running the arc. Well, you could, but what's the joy of the day, you know? Um, so I've done a, you know, I've done a lot down with the dog over there. You know, sometimes we go to Richmond Park because I've got short, sharp hills around here. So it's not yeah. like, it's not like Dragon's Back where I've got, I've got nothing, you know. I've got short, sharp hills. So we go to Richmond Park and I just up, down, up, down, up. And she's going, what, again? Yep. Sorry, Holly, again. And, you know, for another 20, so two, three hours of just literally going up and down um, hills. Like the whole, the whole loop takes me six, seven minutes. Mm. Um, and... Um, and so I've done that and I've done long runs and I've done sort of tried to incorporate some hills or undulations into my long runs um, and you know and I also know that I don't give up which is which is a big thing um, and, I, and I also which is which is nice which I'm pleased about for myself I um, I'm sort of I'm never really grumpy during these races I'm always sort of got a smile I'm always you know which is which is which is what I'm looking forward to it as well because some people say they get really you know or no no nobody admits to it but you see people who are really grumpy not wanting to chat to the volunteers not wanting to say thank you take themselves far too seriously and, and luckily um because it's nothing I've worked on it's just how I am I'm just I don't tend to be like that so I'm quite looking forward to the whole experience and the other thing is I've got nothing else to worry about for that whole 24, 30 hours of than, yeah. than me getting to the finish line, you know, peel back the layers, you know, do something hard outside. It strikes me, it strikes me that you, this, this kind of laissez-faire attitude in a way is, bo is born out of a little bit of experience. You've done a few of these now. Um, you do have a bit of self-confidence and an overarching kind of positivity. Um, mm. You know, what do you say to people who, 
who are who are just maybe this is their first hundred. Good luck. You know, and they're <laughs> scared stiff. Well, look, I was I'm scared stiff. I was scared stiff before my first hundred, um, and I was scared stiff before Dragon's Bat. I was scared stiff before Sparta, and I'm scared stiff about this. Um, and I don't think it's born out of a bit of self confidence, although I've I've earned the self confidence because I've. I'm put, not saying I've that in a negative mind. way. Bad no, way, I think know. it's born out of that's my character. Yeah, and I, and people go, well, how can you be like that? But I quite like it about myself. You know, there's just I quite like the fact that it's just well, we'll just see what happens. You know, I'm very much a last minute revision kind of person, um, but. There is an underlying, like, you know, how can you not have worked out if you're going to put the GPX in your watch 10 days out? There is that, that is a fair enough question. Chris was asking me on the air the other day, mm. where, where is it from and to? Well, it's sort of from the bottom to the, I was quite impressed I knew that it was that way around. <laughs> but it wasn't yeah, don't, but yeah. it. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> you know, and he goes, how can you not know it's two weeks away? Because I do, cause it's two weeks away. <laughs> And yeah. also, even if it was the day before, I do know that you get bus to the start, right? And then you follow the South West Coast path for 100 miles to the end, right? Yeah. That's pretty much all you need to know. That really... Yeah, uh, just get on with it. Just get on with it. I, I just, it's that rather than like any kind of cockiness or, or confidence. It's just that's what I've always been like. You know, the, mm. the race of the stone. That was Petra. I'd never run more than 26 miles before. And then suddenly they're asking me to run 62. Yeah. Um, which is what, two and a half marathons. Um, and I was I was petrified, but I still didn't know that it went that way around, and I still didn't take running shoes to the start. So it's just I feel that stuff can be, you know, cycling is very much um, it's a lovely sport full of lovely people, but they they don't half like you know the layers of gadgets and stuff and and, and, and what the kit is like and what the this uh, you know. Whereas running, I just I love it for the so just the simple act of running and a hundred miles somehow just has that magic about it that number is just a sort of magic number and the fact that it's just longer than 100k and you're going to have you're going to have to problem solve along the way even if you you know science the shit out of it beforehand you know, the night before Sparta I was sharing a room with an Aussie in a hotel in Athens and I said so what do you reckon Mick these shorts or these shorts and he goes what and I went well these are new and really cool apparently and I just got sent them but these ones I run a few marathons I was on and he goes what why would know that <laughs> haven't you organized this already and, 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 he goes, yeah. and, he goes, and i said i don't know i don't know if i'm going to take a, a rock sat or what should i do because there's loads of aid stations in, in. and he goes what, what, what and he's got laminated sheets of what will be available at each aid station what you know where what side of the road he has to run on all of that stuff mm-hmm. and it's like you had like you know tweedledum over here and tweedledee it's like the opposite ends mm-hmm. of the spectrum i'll just turn up and, and so he said right i'm taking you out we're buying you a belt you can wear your. You can wear a belt. That's probably the thing. Well, um, you're, you, you know, your, um, your experienced arc runner will have a crew. They will have an ultra van, and inside that ultra van, they will have a number of perspex boxes. And inside those perspex boxes, they will have uh, sets of shirts, sets of different shoes. They may change their shoes before they get into Penzance because there's five miles of tarmac that they, you know, they yeah, wanna, no, you've got don't want to use trail shoes on tarmac. <laughs> So they'll change their shoes and then they'll all have all sorts of food and nutrition all organised into various calorific amounts. Uh, that, this is great. Oh, it's, this is, it's, I mean, it's like, a, it's like a foreign country, that. That is like, you are like, oh, speaking a different language. <laughs> but I will just, those I, people exist. Vassos. On Thursday, yeah. the 27th, I will go into Whole Foods on my way back from work and mm. I will buy some stuff. Some stuff. Right? Yeah. And I'll go, oh, I'll have some of them, I'll have some of them. Bars, you know, like, oh, no, some of them. And it's quite, I don't buy these bars, they're quite expensive usually, mm. so I don't tend to, you know, use them. And also, they're full of sugar and you don't, you know, I try not to eat sugar, mm. except when I really need it like that. So it's A, a treat, B, a spend up, you know, and I'll just, I'll just do that and then I'll, you know, but you have got your mandatory kit sorted, haven't you? Please tell me you've got. No. There is a. But can I no, just no, no. tell you? But there, I know that there's a kit list. There is a kit list. And I, yes, no. Right, he or knows that. I have to know that there's. I know. I know there's a kit list, and I know I have to organise myself with that. But I haven't yet. Well, it's ten days to go. Exactly. Exactly, Steve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vassos. Listen, if if the thing is, people will be watching this. Yeah. 
while, while you're while out there, on the yeah, course. Yeah. If, you've, if you've already DNF'd, they'll be laughing their heads off. But if you get to the end, sub 30, we will all be very proud no, of you. No, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I have, and I may well have already DNF'd, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's not because two weeks away I haven't worked out where my ma- mandatory kit what is. is it or, you know, what is it because? It's because something's happened. Yes. Um, I would say if you're watching this and I've, D- and, and I've DNF'd, I probably had a fall or something like that. And yeah, I've injured yeah. myself and I can't continue. That's that that's and that's absolutely I totally understand that that could happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that could happen to anyone, even the most organised of, of runners. It, yes, sure. it's that's nothing to do with yes. my lack of preparation. No. And my lack of preparation is not it's not that I just I'll just turn up and see what happens. It's mm. just I do, I have a slightly sort of slapdash uh, 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 sort of aura about me when mm. I didn't look to life, mm. which I again I quite like about mm. myself and. You know, it's not that it won't... You know, I will turn up at the start line with every single bit of kit that I need. Yeah. But I just won't turn up two months out with every single bit of yeah. kit that I need. So I hope people don't think I'm being disrespectful because I'm absolutely not. I I have the utmost respect for anyone who's finished the race, for the people who put on the race. And I'm absolutely thrilled and honoured to be trying to, to, to join the ranks of finishers. It's just I don't do, you know belt and braces preparation I will just I will do what I need to do but I will do it no and that, but I, I think in, in all seriousness there are there are people like you and me and I, I'm very similar to you in that you know I'm, I'm often very last minute and and I have I, I feel I have that kind of look how bad can it be it's you know it's England on the coast just have a run and enjoy mm. it uh, whereas some other people will be completely opposite um, and they're all fine um, and yeah. it, it isn't disrespectful to the race. It's just, it's born again, like I said, uh, out of that kind of a, a self-confidence that I think you have. Yeah. Um, and it's, well, it's just, not I mean, in a negative way. The, the last minute is still a minute. I mean, it's still, you yeah. know, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not like, you know, it's not, it's, it's, you know, if you do it in the last, the Greeks, they used to have a joke, right? Um, when they were coming up to the, no one said that the Greeks would have the Olympics ready for 2004. Right, and then this sort of this joke going around Athens at the time was like one builder to another. You know, when when do we have to get this stadium finished? And they went like summer, and they went no, no, when like August, August the the fifth, August the fifth, morning time? or afternoon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that's me. You know, <laughs> it'll be done. Oh, brilliant. Well, listen, I I hope you're having a great time out there right now. Um, Thank you. I hope I am too. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks, Batos. Cheers. And there we are. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again for another Film My Run next time. Take care. Bye-bye.